Now for that vindicated ball walker, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you very much. Hello again, this is Jack Benny. Remember me, the Garbo of the air? I mean, the Clark Gable of the air? Well, here I am again. Wait a minute, tonight. Why do you compare yourself with Clark Gable? Where's the connection? Oh, I don't know. I think we have something in common. I mean, Clark Gable is a screen lover, and I'm known as a as an air lover. Air lover? Yes, I love the air. I think fresh air is invigorating. Oh, you know? oh, I didn't get it at first. Neither did I. <laughs> I'm glad we got that straightened out. But really, a law as I am, I'm a fresh air fiend. I'm fond of outdoor sports, and I, I even sleep outdoors. Why don't you pay your rent? <laughs> Say, Frank, why don't you come in late sometime like Frank Parker? Why don't you? Oh, so, you're an outdoor man, eh? What's your favorite sport? Uh, you mean hobby? Yes. Well, I, I like horses. I'm, I'm an equestrian. You're a what? I say I'm an equestrian. I ride horses. A Hungarian can do that, too. Ah, <laughs> ah, but not like an equestrian. I think we both showed up too early. Yes, Frank, you took the, uh, you took the words right out of my script. You know? Well, if you ride horses, Jack, you must be interested in polo. Polo? Yes, polo. That requires horsemanship. Of course, but then there are there are two kinds of polo. North polo and south polo. No, no, wait a minute, Frank. I mean, there's land polo and then there's water polo. Yes, see? that's right. In land polo, you ride a horse. Yes, that's it. In water polo, you ride a fish. You should be good at riding fish, Jack. Well, what do you mean? Well, you certainly can hold on to a fin. <laughs> oh, good, no? Uh, there will be a slight pause until everybody gets that joke, you know. You see, folks, a fin is five dollars. Don't worry, they get it. I know, they get it. Well, my name is Frank Carson, and hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Parker. Say, uh, we were just talking about polo. They tell me, uh, they tell me you're quite a polo player. You're right, Jack, but it happens to be basketball. Oh, I knew I was hot there somewhere. <laughs> Say, Lloyd, what's the matter with Parker? I mean, look at the way he keeps turning his head all the time. What's yeah. Hey, Parker, what's the matter with you? Are you nervous tonight? Oh, why? Well, I mean, what do you keep turning your head around for? Well, I spent all week at the six-day bicycle races. Oh, do you like it that much? No. Well, why'd you stay there all week? Well, I hate to walk out in the middle of a performance. Hmm. Well, that's courtesy, yes. Good thing you didn't see ten nights in a bar room. Hmm? So you're an outdoor man, eh? Oh, why bring that up? I thought we were through with that. No, you? Jack. That's what we were talking about when Parker walked in. Yes, sir. The outdoor life is the only life. You said it. The Indian. He lives in the open all the time. He's very healthy. Yeah, there's an Indian on a nickel in your pocket that would like to get out in the open, too. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, you got the first dollar you ever made. I admit that, Frank, but you know me. I'm saving up for a little nest egg. Who's going to lay that egg, King Kong? <laughs> So uh, you're an outdoor man, eh? Yes, Avrilla, we're through with that, oh, please. Oh, no, we're not. I'm an outdoor man, too. Give me the wide open spaces. Give me a sailboat. Give me a fishing rod. Give me a shotgun. How about you, Black? Oh, just a hand sandwich and a bottle of beer for me. Uh, so you're an indoor man, eh? <laughs> but you're right, Frank. There's a sport that builds up. Why, you fellas don't know what outdoor sports are. You're all pale-faced and pasty-looking. Look at me. Every Sunday, I take my wife out motoring in a Chevrolet. Why, why don't you two fellows do that? Well, after all, Aloys, it's your wife. I'm not going to butt in, you know. <laughs> and when you spend a day out in the open with that blue flame engine, the knee action wheels, and that beautiful paint job... Your wife, Avrilla? No, the Chevrolet. This program isn't pulling together at all. Play, Frank, play. I don't know. <laughs> That was Frank, Frank Black, and his orchestra playing in a shelter from a shower. And now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have something different, something novel, original, and away from the usual hokum. Uh, say, Parker, lock that door. I want to keep the pets out of here tonight. I mean, last Sunday, a fellow came in, borrowed five dollars from me. I didn't even know him. I mean, not that I care about the five. You know? <laughs> listen. <laughs> Now, uh, listen, fellas, you know me better than that. I mean, money means nothing. You know, with me, it's easy come and slow departure. <laughs> that last remark was made by Frank Black, who pickles his salary and lets it age for 12 years. <laughs> Top that, will you, Black? No, no, you're entitled to one laugh. Thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. Ain't nobody talking to you, Havrilla. I was. Say, what is this, anyway? Hey, you better answer that, Parker, and remember, I'm out, you know? 
I'm uh, sorry Jack Benny isn't in. Get out of my way. That's a fine way to treat a lady who's been on a vacation. The idea of locking... Well, the well, door. well, Mary Livingston, for heaven's sake. Mary, well, well, well. Hey, this is a surprise, isn't it? It sure is. Well, hello, Mary. When did you get back from Florida? Do you have a swell tan? Well, it's a sort of a Catherine Hepburn. You like that? <laughs> That's good, huh? Hello, Parker. Did you get my postcard? No, Mary, I didn't. Oh, here it is. I forgot to mail it. Yeah, well, that's perhaps why you didn't get it, Parker. Mary, you sure look fine, though. Thanks, Jack. And you know, I wrote a poem while I was away. Yeah? Let me see how you like it. Oh. Uh, way down south in Mexico, oh, 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 oh. Yes, yes. Well, that's as far as I got. You I know, see. I was so busy running around here and there. Oh, sure. Say, you must have had a swell time in Florida. Did you visit the Everglades? No, I dropped over, but they weren't at home. Oh, I see. And Jack, you know... I stepped into that. Pardon me. Go ahead. <laughs> the other night, I saw the Canera Lochran fight. Oh, so you're the one who saw it, huh? Well. I waited for that laugh. I'm no fool. Huh? So you saw the Carnera mm-hmm. Lochran fight. Who won? Max Bear. Oh. <laughs> Now we're getting someplace, you know. Oh, look, boys, I brought you all souvenirs from Miami. Just some little remembrance. Yeah, that's awfully sweet of you. Hey, thanks, Mary. Yeah, I got them right here in this package. Jack, you open it, will you? Sure, yes. Yeah. You know what I got for you, Parker? No, what? Oh, it's a surprise, and the only one in Florida. What is it? A California orange. Oh. <laughs> Mary, if you ever go to Los Angeles, send me a Florida grapefruit, will you? You know? If I think of it, Jack. Oh, think of it, yeah. And here's something for you, Havrilla. Guess what it is. Uh, I give up. A pinch of sand from Miami Beach. But Mary could have got that in Coney Island. Huh? Oh, not like this. Feel the goods in the sand. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice piece of goods, yes. I wish you'd have bought me a bottle of air. They say the air is marvelous down there, you know? Yes, until you get on the air Sunday night. I get it, I get it. Huh? And look what I got for Frank Flash. Mm. This ought to be good. A leather cigarette case. Here it is, Frank. Thanks, Mary. Gee, that's pretty. Well, wait, this is Mark. Greetings from Atlantic City. Yes, I've been saving it for you since last summer. <laughs> you certainly brought some swell things to Miami. Nothing for me, Mary? Oh, yes, Jack. I was coming to that. Here, here's a little souvenir. What is it? My hotel bill. Here. Hmm, $110.35? Play, Frank. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for Mr. Parker. That was Romance, sung by Frank Parker. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to read our weekly fan letters. Uh, these letters have been piling up at the rate of one a week, and there seems to be no let-up. <laughs> anyway, here it is. Mr. Jack Benny, care of Box 4 Automat. <laughs> Dear Mr. Benny, I have listened to several of your broadcasts, and as I am also doing nothing, I would like to get into your branch of our business. <laughs> How can I become a master of ceremonies? Signed, John Winchell, Keyhole West, Florida. <laughs> P.S. Please give me your answer Sunday night as I will be listening. Well, John, first of all, to be a successful master of ceremonies, you must have courage. I'll say. That also goes for an orchestra leader who just waves a stick and hopes for the best. <laughs> But, Jack, to be successful in any profession, you must have courage. Yes, yes. What do you mean by courage, Jack? Well, take, take an aviator. When he undertakes a long hop, say, over the ocean, he must have courage. I thought he must have gas. Well, yes, gas and courage, yes. And I want to tell you one thing right now. It takes plenty of courage to become a master of ceremonies. And a little nerve. And patience. And gall. Of course, if you have any talent, that's gravy, you know. <laughs> You guys kill me, really. I mean, uh, who do you think is the outstanding personality on this program? The goat without a nose. <laughs> well, keep him outstanding. Anyway, I think I'm good, and I have the courage of my conviction. That's only one punk's opinion. Oh, yeah, I don't like this in here. I don't like that remark, Black. Well, what are you going to do about it? Boys, boys, remember, after all, this is the Chevrolet program. Yeah, I still don't like that guy. Courage. Well, you haven't got the nerve of a rabbit. But his ears are coming along all right. 
Now, wait a minute. I've had enough of this. No such short musician is going to talk that way to me. I resent that. So what? Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. All right, all right. But I must uphold the honor of a musician. I hereby challenge Jack Benny to a duel with swords, pistols, or a name your weapon. I accept. Never let it be said that a Benny didn't have courage. That's the idea, boys. <laughs> That's the idea, I say, boys. You must both oppose your honor. Yeah. I suggest that we meet at the old graveyard, yeah. the outskirts of the city, in ten minutes. That suits me. The quicker the better. Come on, Mary. You want to go along? Sure. I haven't been to a murder in weeks. <laughs> All right. Get in my car and let's go. Play, boys. I'll be right back. That's what you think. <laughs> Come, Mary. Do I look yellow to you? Yes. Then let us away. I must defend my dignity and my honor. Oh, Jack. Jack. Yes, Parker. Can I go along? I want to sing when I hear those guns. Sing what? Smoke that's in your eyes. Play, boys. <laughs> Frank Black's boy playing Louisiana Hayride from Flying Colors. And now we take you to the scene of the duel. The old graveyard on the outskirts of the city. This is the place, boys. Right by the side of this old graveyard. Hmm, very convenient. That suits me. You don't scare me. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm worried. My, what a place this is. And what a beautiful moonlit night for this occasion. Yeah? There's a pretty tombstone. Let's see what it says. Here lies the body of Sam O'Toole. He lived till he fought Frank Black a duel. <laughs> hmm, this must be Black's home ground. <laughs> what are you shaking for, Jack? Nothing, Mary. I was just thinking what might happen to poor Frank. You know, after all, he's not a bad guy. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Ooh. Well, boys, let's get started. Yes, let's get it over with. I got to get back to the studio. Yeah, who don't? You won't. Are you nervous, Jack? A little bit. Well, then wait a minute. I've got an idea. What is it? Well, quiet. See, Frank, uh, see that tombstone over there? It's awfully dark, Mary. Well, here's what it says. Here lies the body of old Nick Kenny... He fired first and missed Jack Benny. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I won't miss him. Where'd you see that tombstone, Mary? I made it up myself. I thought I'd scare him. That a girl, huh? <laughs> see how scared Frank Black is now? Come on, let's get going. He certainly is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, boys. Step up here to this line. Okay. Okay. Now, here are two sharp knives and two revolvers. It's up to you men to decide which to use. I'll take a knife. That's fair. Give me a gun. Then I'll take a... I'll take a gun, too. The big copycat. Well, sticks, sticks and stones might break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Pish tush to you. Yeah. Nah. Boys, 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 stop playing. Now both of you turn your back and step ten paces from each other. I think ten blocks will be there, don't you, Aloys? <laughs> no, ten paces. How much is ten paces, Mary? About three dollars in American money. Oh, <laughs> One, two, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, wait a minute. Just a minute. If you don't mind if I go over and practice a while, I haven't used a gun since our murder mystery. If your opponent agrees, yes. I don't mind, but make it snappy. Come, Jack, don't worry about Frank Black. He couldn't hit a wedding with a handful of rice. But, Mary, these are bullets, not rice. Well, I'll try a few shots at the target over there by the fence. Watch this, Mary. <coughs> hmm. Great, Jack. Try another one. That's swell. All right, where's that guy, Frank Black? Uh, bring him on. Hey, what was that? Hmm, that's Frank Black practicing. Oh, he's good, too. Ha, <laughs> ha, <laughs> just a palooka. He missed. My mistake. <laughs> Must have been a lazy bullet. You know? Oh, he does tricks, too. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Let's go. Are you ready, Jack? 
Yes, but if Frank wants to apologize, it's okay with me, you know. I... No, no, if you back out now, you'll be the laughing stock of the town. Yeah, well, at least I'll be able to hear it. <laughs> You've got to go through with it. Okay, are you all right, Mary? Never felt better in my life, Associated Press. <laughs> Mary, here's ten dollars. Bet it on me. I think you can get ten to one. I'll give you fifteen to one myself. The bet's off. <laughs> Say, when I get through with you, you'll look like a golf course. Eighteen holes. Yeah, listen here, Black. I'm, I'm going to fill you so full of holes, you look like the no-draft ventilation. Yeah? Thanks for the plug, Jack. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute, fellas. What are you doing around here? Who are you? I'm the game warden. Say, what are you doing with those guns? Don't you know this isn't a hunting season? Hey, this is a duel. We're just going to shoot each other. Of course, if you want to stop us, that's your business. No, no, go right ahead. But be careful. Don't don't kill any of those ducks. Don't worry. Jack Benny's the duck I want to kill. Okay, boys. So long. Well, for heaven's sake, let's get started. All right, all right. I'm ready. <laughs> be brave, Jack. What can you lose? You're right, Mary. Napoleon is dead, and look how popular he is. <laughs> now, boys... Turn your back to each other, and when I blow this whistle, mark when Whistle? <laughs> whistle. When you hear the second whistle, turn and fire, and may the best man win. Don't worry, Ma. I'll be right home. Same here, Ma. One Same. of us is lying, you know. <laughs> Just a minute, boys. This duel comes to you through the courtesy of Chevrolet, the most dependable car in the low price field. Oh! Jack, Jack, speak to me. Are you all right? Why, yes, Mary. That guy couldn't hit Kate Smith with a football. Frank, 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 tell me, are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Oh! My heaven! What's the matter? We shot Avrilla. Where? Right in the middle of the advertising. Oh! <laughs> Death, I didn't shoot you, you know? Same here, Jack. From now on, let's be pals. Oh. Play, Frank. Play. Number of the 22nd program on the 4th of March. We'll be with you again next Sunday night. Our own little happy family. Say, Havrilla, yeah. come here. I don't want the folks to think you were really shot. You know, how do you feel? Oh, I'm fine. Sure, we were only kidding. Yeah, but I'm not kidding when I say that the 1934 Chevrolet gives more miles per gallon than ever before. I, I wasn't kidding that time. Good night, folks. This program comes to you through the courtesy of the motor car dealers in your community who represent the 1934 Chevrolet 6. This is the National Broadcasting Company.